So we've got over a bunch of the curve brush functionality. And if you're just starting with this video, you're from the internet, this is a whole playlist series. Go back a few videos if you're interested in the curve brush functionality in 2021.6. In this video, we're gonna be covering the beginning of mesh from mask functionality. So to kind of show that off, let's go right up here to our tool palette, grab that poly mesh 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. And the reason I like to start with the poly mesh star is because it's already a poly mesh. I don't have to go in here, choose a primitive and then hit make poly mesh 3D. It's already ready to be sculpted on. So I guess that's the first step is have something in your scene that you can sculpt on, whether it's a poly mesh here or a primitive here that you have converted to make poly mesh 3D, whatever you wanna do. But again, we'll go back to that poly mesh star here. Another thing I want to consider is while I'm making this thing, I'm going to turn my floor on so I know where I am in space. Now I have turned off my preferences cam view. You can turn that on. This will actually give you a pretty good idea of how, how things are in space as well. Um, but if you don't have that on, Z, this blue line forward, is to the front of your object, X is side to side, and then Y is up sitting on that floor plane here. So knowing that, I'm going to go to the side here. And if you've been to my art station page or my YouTube channel, you're going to know that uh, we kind of went through here and we used this to kind of make a fish. So we'll start with that just so you can kind of see how to bring in reference and start creating things with this mask balloon that we're going to demo here. So first things first, let's go in here to texture import, go into ZBrush demo, grab the fish, go back into texture, select the image, click plus the little plus spotlight sign here. Let's go ahead and turn this opacity down. Just click opacity and crank it to the left here. And we'll also scale this down. Again, click scale and just move it to the left. So this is spotlight. If you want more information on spotlight functionality, I think the latest one would be ZBrush 2019, what's new. There is a spotlight 2.0 update. And of course there's, you know, a basics video in here so you can get caught up on that. But essentially we have our spotlight in here that's gonna act as our reference and I can hit shift Z at this point to turn it off. Z to turn it on with a gizmo and then Z just to make it so I can sculpt with the object with my reference sitting there. So now let's talk about mask from mesh. If you hold down control, that's gonna narrow down all of your brushes to just the mask options. If you don't hold down control, they're kind of buried in here somewhere. So again, hold down control, go up here to your mask palette. And then now you're gonna see we have new options, mesh balloon, mesh extrude, mesh extrude proportional, mesh project, and mesh splat. We're going to be talking about all of these, but we're going to start over here with mesh balloon. So again, holding down control, click mesh balloon. And now whenever we hit the control key, we have a mesh, we're using mesh balloon to mask. Now you may just be starting in here and you're going to go, okay, now I just want to mask, you know, where the fish is and start dragging it out. And all it's going to do, if I hit shift Z to turn spotlight off, is it's going to mask our star. Well, the reason it's doing that is because if I don't start with the mask line over the mesh, it doesn't know where to begin placing your mesh. So again, if I just drag out here and nowhere, this is no man's land. There's nothing going on in here. So I can mask my object if I start out here, but that's about it. If I wanna have thickness and volume and give this thing a place to start, I have to drag over my mesh first, and then as I complete the mesh here, it'll go ahead and create something. Now that doesn't mean you have to stay there. You can start dragging out your stroke and then drag, hold down space bar and move this around wherever you want, and then go ahead and finish wherever you want. In fact, you don't even have to finish on the object. You can start dragging out your stroke, hold space bar, and then just finish. It just needs that point in space in order to know what to do with your mesh. So having said that, let's hit Shift Z to bring our reference back. I'm going to start dragging the profile of this fish. I'll hold down control and start dragging. And I'm going to hold down space bar and move it over and then finish drawing out this fish. So there we go. Now we do have a problem. If I hold down or if I do shift Z to get rid of the spotlight again and I go to the side here, you're going to see it's off center because essentially where I started drawing, it picked that point in space on the, on the poly mesh star and then put the middle right where I started drawing. So if I wanted to do like a geometry modified to Topology, uh, mirror and weld across the x-axis. Now it's centered, but you know, it kind of squashed my object here. So let's undo that. Let's figure it, let's talk about a way around that. So I'm gonna hit Shift Z again. And again, I wanna make a profile of this fish. And here's the thing, if you don't wanna have to deal with this and holding on spacebar and moving your object around, all you need to do, we can go down here to like initialize Q grid, rotate this grid so we're Z forward here from the side scale that out and now when I draw I have an object sitting there and I can go through here and I can go ahead and just drag on the fish. 
The other cool thing about doing that method is if I hit Shift Z, it actually puts it right down the middle because the starting point on this plane is luckily right in the middle of world center. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You can start on the object and on the object. You don't have to worry about, worry about using your space bar and you don't need to worry about world center. However, it is gonna come in handy if I hit Control Z back to where we had the star sitting here. It's gonna come in handy to know some of the functionality I'm gonna talk about. So again, let's make this fish. We're gonna hold down Control, start dragging out, and then we're gonna finish the profile of the fish. And before I let go, I'm gonna hold down Shift. And what that's going to do is force it to go in the middle, world axis middle. So I'm gonna move my camera back to the side here. And I keep, if, let's say I keep adding stuff to this. I'm gonna hold down control, I'm gonna make this fin. And you're gonna see also, as I'm dragging this out, it has that red line behind it. They've added lazy mouse functionality to the mask brush. You can control that by holding down control, going in here to the stroke menu, opening up the lazy mouse menu, you're gonna see here's your lazy radius. So number one, if I turn that off, now I don't have the red line behind it anymore and it's acting like it used to. Uh, however, I can go in here turn on lazy mouse, crank that lazy radius up, and now you're getting a nice smooth stroke. In fact, we're gonna be in there a bit, so I'm actually gonna take the stroke menu and just drag it over here uh, to the left so we can always see it. Now I'm gonna turn this lazy radius down just a bit while we're using it, and we're gonna go over here again, and we're gonna hold down control and start dragging out this fin. Now when I drag out this fin, you're gonna see, again, it starts wherever I touch on the surface. So while I'm from the side, I'm actually touching right about here. So when it draws the mesh, it's gonna center that mesh right on that point I touched. So again, following this here, and you know what, we don't even need this reference. We'll just Shift Z, get rid of that. We, we know what a fish looks like. So I'm gonna go over here, hold down Control and start dragging this out, and there we go. However, if I hold down Control, start dragging this out and hold down Shift, it's going to shoot it right to the middle. And if I go up here to transform, you're going to see if I hit the X key on my keyboard, that turns on Activate Symmetry, and it'll activate it across the, across the X axis. Now, because we're already Z forward, the front face of my fish is pointing forward, X is side to side. So now if I go and put a fin on both sides here, it's going to be mirrored on both sides with X symmetry turned on. However, again, if I hold down Control, and then before I let go, hold down Shift, it'll push it right to the middle. So this is useful if you wanna not hold down shift and just put in a little fin here and here. And then if you do wanna you know, put something down the middle, just go ahead and put your middle shape here, hold down shift, and then hold down shift before you drop it. And there it goes, there you go, it snaps it right to the middle. Now, if you wanted something thinner, you can hold down control. Again, every setting that I'm changing, you wanna make sure you're holding down control. If, for example, if I, don't hold down control and I change my Z intensity down and then I hold down control and drag the shape out and hold down shift to shoot it to the middle, it's still gonna be pretty fat. And I'm like, well, I moved the Z intensity down. Remember, in order to change the settings for the brush we're using, which is the mesh balloon, hold down control, so the mesh balloon modifier brush is selected basically, and then go down here to Z intensity, drag out your shape, hold down shift, and now you'll get a thinner shape. So again, if we wanna put a fin on the back here, we can go through here, mask and then hold down shift that puts it right down the middle so you can use a combination of holding down shift letting go of shift and putting things in the middle of your world or just having them start wherever you uh, you know put it on the mesh so again if i want to put an eyeball on here in fact I want to put an eyeball on here let's switch the stroke out instead of lasso let's choose circle so we can use a circle stroke and we'll just add an eyeball here and you know what let's fatten that up i'm gonna hold down control bump that Z intensity up. So there we go, we can add uh, a circle here, a circle here, we can just keep adding circles all over the mesh. And because I didn't hold down shift, they're all gonna be stuck wherever I first started that brush stroke. Now, if I wanna put a circle out in space, like it's breathing bubbles, I can start a circle stroke here and then use my space bar to move it off the object, hold down shift and boom, it'll put it right down the middle. Or I can hold down control, make a circle move it off, and if I don't hold down shift, wherever that point is on that mesh that I first touched, it's gonna to put it right there. And because we have X symmetry on, it's gonna be the same on both sides. So now, let's hold down control. We're in mask balloon. Let's switch back to mask lasso. And again, I'm gonna go over here, uh, give myself some room to put a big Loch Ness monster kind of neck and head on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down control. Again, I'm gonna start on the mesh because that's gonna tell me, it tell it it's I'm ready to make meshes with this brush. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna make a big neck shape 
and then go back down and I'm gonna hold down shift so it snaps to the middle of my world. Now I wanna put a head on here, so I'm gonna hold down control. And you maybe think, okay, for the head, I do wanna hold down shift because I want it to be centered in the world. So I'm gonna hold down shift and this time it added to it. You can see it kind of boolean those two shapes together, kind of voxelize it all in one shape here. So you may notice now you can hold down control and then hold down shift and it's gonna continue adding those shapes to your object. And in fact, you can hold down control and then alt and it'll subtract shapes. And in fact, there's even one more if you're if you're familiar with boolean operations in ZBrush, we have union, subtraction and intersection. So Holding down shift will union, holding down alt will subtract, and then holding down control, alt, and shift before you drop will do an intersection. So let's go back to where we just had the head and the neck. Now the reason we're able to do this is because we didn't move our camera. So you're going to see if I move my camera and then go over here and be like, okay, now I want to cut the eyeball out again. You're going to go hold down uh, control and then alt, it's just going to add eyeballs to it. Or, you know, if you go down here and you hold down control and then shift, it's just going to put a shape down the middle. Now there will be fancier ways to kind of Boolean objects when we get into live Boolean methods with other mesh masking options. But for mesh, mesh balloon and the organic nature of it, it's probably easier if you just, you know, don't move the camera, hold down shift to add, alt to subtract, and then just realize if you ever do move the camera, and then start drawing stuff again. If you move the camera, you know, you add a shape here and then hold down control and then, you know, keep moving. It's gonna keep adding more shapes. However, if you don't move the camera, holding down control and then alt or then control and then shift, it'll keep adding to that shape. Now we've talked a little bit about, uh, if we hold down control and we go into picker here, you're gonna see we have one Z and continuous Z. So if you choose continuous Z, that's gonna continuously evaluate the surface it's going on. So if I go through here and I put on a shape, it's going to evaluate the surface and put this right on there. So if I hold down control and drag that Z intensity down, we can put like a little blanket mesh on top of the pre-existing mesh. And if I don't move the camera, again, hold down control and then just hold down shift before I commit, it'll go ahead and add to it. And the same if I go down uh, alt, it'll cut it out. However, if I go back into picker by holding down control, do once Z, um, that's just going to evaluate the surface one time. So wherever I start dragging and then I make a mask, it's just going to put that shape right on that one surface. So here, it's going to put that shape wherever I first started drawing. And then if I go into picker and do continuous Z and I start drawing here, it's gonna kind of stick it to the surface with a continuous evaluation of the underlying surface. So basically picker, one Z is like a free flowing shape that's gonna to conform to just one point, the point you start at, and then continuous Z is gonna constantly evaluate the underlying meshes and put a blanket over it. But again, again, hold down shift and add to that shape, hold down alt, subtract from that shape. And if you move your camera and then do this again and hold down shift, it's just gonna add more geometry. Again, move the camera, there you go. You got more stuff here. It just keeps layering up more blankets of geometry. So let's crank our Z intensity back up. Again, hold down control first and then crank your Z intensity back up. Let's take this undo slider and get rid of some of this mess here. Then let's talk a little bit about the actual shape of the mesh balloon. So if we drag this out, you're gonna see, oops, let's go back into picker and say once Z, you're gonna see we get this shape and it's nice and balloony. And in fact, for these uh, demonstrations, I'm gonna hold down control and then I'm gonna tap shift to make sure it shoots right to the middle. So now we're getting this nice balloon shape. And how that's happening is if we go in here to our if we go down here under our brush menu and the curve option here, you're going to see there's an edit curve. Just click on that and now you have a curve in here. So let's go ahead and just hit the reset button. And if this one, we'd hold down control and then again shift to shoot at the middle, getting very much the same result. However, if you hold down control and we pull this way out, we're going to get that profile curve in our mesh. So again, hold down control, make the shape, hold down shift before you commit. And now if we go to the side, it's not a nice balloon shape. It's this shape right here. It kind of goes out and then down, gives you more of a boxy shape. Let's hold down control. Let's pull this way in and then hold down control and then shift before we commit. And now we're getting almost nothing out here and then just a little whoop right here uh, where our profile curve is. Having a little more fun with this, let's hold down control, hit reset, flip horizontal. 
And now if we do this, and again, hold on shift before we commit, now we're getting the opposite, which is it's all geometry, and then it kind of divots out, or you know, kind of cuts in the balloon shape we had previously. In fact, if we take this offset, and we just drag that up, so we put this offset line here. I don't know how often you would use these shapes, but just talking about how this curve works, we might as well go over them. Pull down control, and then shift before you commit, and now we're getting a box shape with this kind of profile offset line cut in. Now, let's go ahead and, again, reset the line, get rid of your offset zero. Let's crank up our strength. So now we're gonna get a stair-stepping pattern. We, in fact, crank the steps up here. You know, let's flatten these steps out a little bit here. So play with the strength and the steps number here. So when we hold down Control and then Shift before we commit, now you're getting that stepped look. And there's one more option here. Hold down Control, hit Reset. Um, there's noise, so you can add noise to your line, and you can go through here and you hold down control, and it'll just make you a, a noisy thing. However, if you take the strength, put it down to negative two, and again, hold down control, go into picker, set to continue a Z, and if you use this to kind of just drag a, a mesh around, it'll actually, and that's, hold down control, let's drop that Z intensity way down here. You're gonna see this, I'll give you a little splat effect. So you can go through here and you can kind of splat geometry on, and in fact, that's an actual brush we're going to use later. So if you want to recreate that brush, that's essentially just modifying this curve and the picker to continuously update and the thickness, and you essentially have the splat brush. Now there's just a few more things we need to talk about. Let's take this undo slider and again, just get rid of some of that mess. And we'll go ahead and hold down control and reset that curve. In fact, if you want to hold down control, go in here to brush. Oh, we have our brush menu over here. And then this see uh, reset current brush or reset all brushes. There we go. Now we have our uh, original curve back for this brush. So we talked about transform activating in the symmetry, which means if we draw on here, oops, select mask balloon, it's gonna go to both sides, mirrored across the x-axis. We can go in here and we can say, turn on radial count. And now when we go through here and we mask off, it'll do radial symmetry. And I'll bring this up in later videos too when it's a little bit more relevant, but when I'm going through here, and let's turn off, Let's just tap X to turn off our symmetry here. Uh, we can go through here and we're making a shape and you can hold down because we have underneath the stroke menu here, lazy mouse available, we can hold down shift and then we can have straight lines. So we can hold down shift, 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 and we'll get very straight lines. And when we let this go, you know, we get a little bit more straight lines to our profile. And there's one more thing I need to bring up. It's gonna be maybe a little bit more useful on some of these other brushes, but again, we can change the, the stroke to be, you know, whatever shape you want. This is a rectangle. And again, as long as you don't move the camera, you can go through here, you can hold down Control, Alt, or then Shift, and then just keep adding to that. That's a cool little shape here. Let's go ahead and add a circle here, and got a cool little human guy. But what I really wanna get at is you can hold down control, go into rectangle, and then you can add an alpha. So you can go through here and you can drag out an alpha and that'll give you the shape of the alpha as well.